surrender all. That that's that's it. That's it right there. Um, we have to be willing to surrender to the will of God. We have to be willing to surrender to Jesus Christ as our Lord, or we have nothing. I surrender all. And that means giving yourself over to the will of Christ and allowing the Spirit to move in you. Last week I told y'all a, a Holy Ghost story. Well, this week I want to finish that story a little bit and tell you about an action that a lot of people in this world do and even a lot of Christians do that we are actually commanded not to and that is grieving the Spirit. So I had to look that up. What does grieving the Spirit mean? The King James Version of 1 Thessalonians 5.19 says, Do not grieve the Spirit. Uh, the version I typically read out of says, Do not stifle the Spirit. And that's a pretty good definition of the word grieve is stifle. But what it really means is extinguish, as in to put out a flame, or to set aside, or to ignore. It can even be as much as ignore or silence. There are several different words that are listed as definitions for grief in this case. Do not grieve the Spirit. See, the Spirit convicts us. It guides us. It helps us to understand the will of God. It helps us to understand the Word of God. It leads our minds and our hearts in the right direction. And as humans, given into the sin nature that comes from the fall, we grieve the Spirit. We don't want to listen to that because that's hard. The easy thing is to just do our will. But the Spirit wants to guide us in God's will. And so when the Bible says not to grieve the Spirit, it's saying to not put aside or act grudgingly toward that spirit. So when we feel that conviction and we go, oh man, that's the start of grieving. That's the start of stifling. It's our first resistance against what the spirit's telling us. We know when we've done wrong, when we've sinned, and we know that we should repent. And so we typically try to fight the Spirit and go against what it says. And so, I'm going to mention these other verses, but I want you to turn to Isaiah 63, if you will. And I'll mention these other verses. I've already mentioned 1 Thessalonians 5.19, Do not stifle the Spirit. It's a pretty clear direction. It's in a list of directions that Paul was given the church of Thessalonica. And it was right there in the mix. Five simple words in the Holy Christian Standard Version. Four words in the King James Version. But they're important words. King James says, quench not the spirit. Four words. And those four words are powerful. In the command that they give. And in Isaiah 63... Starting in verse 7, we see God's command to the Israelite people. Isaiah is full of prophecies and is full of directions. And, but in this instance, we see something going on here. Starting in verse 7, it says, I will make known the Lord's faithful love and the Lord's praiseworthy acts because of all the Lord has done for us, even the many good things he has done for the house of Israel, which he did for them based on his compassion and abundance of his faithful love. See, a lot of critics say that the Old Testament God was one of vengeance. It says he's one of love and compassion. It's the same God you see in the New Testament. There's no difference. It says, he said, this is what God said, they are indeed my people, children who will not be disloyal. And he became their savior. So God identified them as his people. And he had faith that they wouldn't be disloyal. 
And so he became their savior. And it continues, in all their suffering, he suffered. And the angel of his presence saved them. He redeemed them because of his love and compassion. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of the past. So he did all this for them. In verse 10, we see their reaction. But they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. They rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he became their enemy and fought against them. We sometimes rebel and grieve his Holy Spirit. And that's why Paul told us not to. Because he already knew what had happened in the past. God sentenced the Israelite people to exile. They were held captive in Babylon and Assyria for no less than 70 years. We know that because of the writings of Daniel. 70 years for their grievance. God holds us to a standard. He has faith in us that we will not be disobedient. And so he shows us love and compassion. But when we grieve his spirit and don't repent, he has every right as Lord and Master over us and over this world and universe to hold us in contempt of that grievance. So we have to grow to the point where we don't even have to think about it. We're going to listen to the Spirit because we surrender all. Everything we do, everything we come in contact with, everything we put an effort toward needs to be 100% in the name of Jesus. And when we do that, we start the process of sanctification. We as a church preach sanctification, and we do it for this reason, because it's biblically sound in this teaching that it is attainable. So when the Spirit convicts you, don't stifle it. When the Spirit leads you in a direction you're not sure you want to go, don't grieve it. Surrender to it and allow it to lead you. In Hebrews 10, five verses, verses 14 through 18, it says, For by one offering he, was, he has perfected forever those who are sanctified. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. Or after, or after, he says, this is the covenant, that's a promise. This is the covenant I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will not put my laws, nor I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. He adds, I will never again remember their sins and their lawless acts. Now where there is forgiveness of these, there are no longer an offering for sin. What he's saying here in the book of Hebrews, the writer was writing to the Hebrew people and telling them that because of the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross at Calvary, there is no need for another sacrifice because forgiveness has come from that. He's saying that the Holy Spirit will sanctify those who give in to that sacrifice who accept that sacrifice, who call on the name of Jesus in their lives and allows him to work in them. And it starts with surrendering all to the Holy Spirit so that it can work its power through you. So that God can work through you through the Holy Spirit. If you surrender all to him, you will reach the point of sanctification where you will not have to continually repent because you have given in to that. You may not reach that in this life, but you will reach that in the next. It's an ongoing effort on our part to surrender everything to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we do that by listening to the Spirit of God. Ephesians 4.30 says, Don't grieve God's Holy Spirit because you are sealed by Him for the day of redemption. Again, we see Paul writing to a church to not grieve, to not um, hold in contempt this, the, the Holy Spirit. When we saw in Isaiah where it said that they had grieved the Holy Spirit, the King James uses the word vexed. 
And that means displeased. It means that they hurt God's feelings. They displeased the Lord. He had faith in them that they wouldn't be disobedient. And they broke that faith. God has faith in us that we will surrender our will to His. Don't break that faith. Don't grieve the Spirit. Give in to the will of God and allow Him to work through you and through your life. We're called for a purpose here. Every single person has a purpose on this earth. We're called for a purpose. The purpose given to us by Jesus is to minister to others, to witness to others, to share with others the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus called a handful of fishermen to become fishers of men. He said to them to to go out and catch as many as you can. Because it's the shepherd's duty to separate the goats from the sheep, right? Jesus is the shepherd. It's just like it's the harbor master's duty to separate the good fish from the bad. The fishermen just catch the fish. Go out and spread the nets. Bring in as many people as you can to the foe to God and let him do the sword. Don't be the judge for yourself. Just witness. That's all you're called to do. Witness. Share with everyone that you can, every person around you. Show them what the love of Christ looks like. And you do that by listening to the Spirit and giving everything you got to Him. So it's important that we don't grieve the Spirit. And that's the real Holy Ghost story is that we give truth to every person we come in contact with and that we allow grace to work through us so that we can move in sanctification. And that's in the growing of the Spirit inside of us and allowing ourselves to move out of the way so that He can take full control. That's what sanctification is. That's what we have to give in to. It's not impossible. It's just hard. And a lot of people don't want hard. They want an easy road. And that's not the life that we chose of being Christians. We chose to follow God's way, to listen to His word, and trust in His will. If it was easy, the whole world would turn. So I ask you just to give in to the will of God. But I want to finish with what happened in Isaiah. We saw all the way up to verse 10, where they rebelled and grieved his spirit. And so he became their enemy and fought against them. But picking up verse 11, it says, Then he remembered the days of the past, the days of Moses and his people. Where is he who brought them out of the sea with the shepherds of his flock? Where is he who put his Holy Spirit among the flock? He made his glorious strength available at the right hand of Moses, divided the water before them to make an eternal name for himself and led them from the depths like a horse in the wilderness so that they did not stumble. Like cattle that go down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord gave them rest. You led your people this way to make a glorious name for yourself. God will provide. He will remember that you have given yourself to Him. We don't stay in our sins. We don't say, oops, I messed up and sat there. We repent. And He remembers the promise that He made. And He'll restore you. He restored the Israelite people after 70 years. He can restore you too. He can restore me. He can restore all of us if we give ourselves over to Him. Repent of any sins that we've done and allow Him to do His work. And that's the story of the Holy Ghost. That's what the Spirit's for. is to lead us in that right direction. To guide us on the path that we should be. To provide us comfort when we sin so that we know that we have done that. He convicts us of those sins so that we can seek repentance. 
He makes it known in our hearts and our minds the will of God because he has heard it from God himself to share it with us among us through us. He has come to work through us so that we can be the light of this world and the salt of this earth so that we can bring more to the boat of Christ. All things should be done for the glory of God. And God will make all things done for his glory if we allow him to move in us and get ourselves out of the way. If we continue to stand in his way, he will turn against us and make us enemies. I, for one, don't want to be on that side of the fence. I want to be able to stand in judgment and hear God say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And I know each and every one of you do too, and I ask that you share that message with everybody. That there's only two options. Well done, my good and faithful servant, or get away from me for I never knew you. One is through surrendering to him. And one is surrendering to the chains of slavery of sin. I want to be free in Christ. And I ask that each and every one of you choose the same. And I ask that every person who hears this message chooses the same. So, with that, I ask that if anybody wants an altar is open, we can all pray together and we can pray for every person we know. Healing, strength, grace, mercy, compassion, and love. Those are the things we should pray for every person that we know, whether we like them personally or not, whether they are a friend or foe. We should pray no less for one or the other. If you enjoyed that message, uh, subscribe so that you can stay up to date with all the current messages as they come out. And also look forward to the coming holiday season as I try to prepare a special message for the month of December. Thank you for listening. Uh, remember, you can find all this content at brotherjamesparty.com. It's B-R-O, jamesparty.com. You can also find us on social media with the same tagline, Brother James Party. Thank you.